Shalom and welcome to Hebrew with Maim. This week's Torah portion is Kitisa, which means when you take up. And it's found in Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 through 34, verse 35. We're going to start with the English of the first verse, which says, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, and this is the Hebrew for that verse. There is a vav with a patak, which says va. And this, um, this yud here, um, this shiva is silent. So shivanach, so it's, it's a silent shiva. So this is going to be just the closing of this syllable right here. So it'll be vai, vai. And this is a dalit with a patak, which says da. And this is a bet with sere, and the resh together will say ber. So it's three syllables, vai, da, ber. And this mircha is the chopper accent mark. And so we know that the accent goes on the last syllable, ber, vai, da, ber. And that means, and he spoke. This is yud, he, vav, he. And um, when we counter this word, when, when, when reading from a Torah school, we say Adonai. Adonai, this is a sacred name, the Tetragrammatron. So, Vaidaber Adonai, which means, and Adonai spoke. And this is an Aleph with a Sigol, which says E, and then the Lamed says L. <laughs> so, this is L. The Sigol says E, and L means two. This is a Mem, and this, this is a Shin, and this dot over the, the right arm. Um, tells you it's a shin, but it also serves as the vowel for the mem. It's both. It's doing double duty. And the cholem says o. Oh. So mo, and then this is a sugo, and this he is silent. Sugo says e, so moshe. Moshe, Moses. So um, Hashem, or Adonai, spoke to Moses. And this is um, a lamed with a um, sere, which says e, so it says le, this aleph is part of that syllable, so it's just le, and this is a mem with a cholem, which says o, and this is an aresh, which is a r, r sound, this is mor, le mor, and this is the accent right here, and this is the trope mark, sof pasuk, which indicates the end of the verse. <coughs> so, um, le mor, Vaidaber Adonai el Moshe Lemor. Lemor means saying or to say. So Hashem spoke to Moses saying, or Hashem spoke to Moses to say. And the English for the next verse is Exodus chapter 30, verse 12. When you take the sum of the children of Israel according to their numbers, let each one give to the Lord an atonement for his soul when they are counted. Then there will be no plague among them when they are counted. So something interesting about this verse is that it's, it, it's indicating that if they do not give um, an atonement, then the census will, taking the census, taking the count, will actually cause a plague among them. This is an interesting thought um, because if you, if you remember, um, when King David took a census, there was um, there was a there was a plague that um, that um, happened, and um, so uh, there is this idea that um, it's not really appropriate to take a census of the children of Israel, of the people of Israel, and I read that this comes from. The promise from that Hashem gave to Abraham that his descendants would be as the stars of the sky, which can't be counted. But here, um, Hashem gives a remedy for um, being punished for taking the census, which is to give an atonement, give something as an atonement for his soul, each man. Okay, let's get into the Hebrew. This is a, a kaf with a chirik and the yud together. The e, the chirik says e, so this is ki, ki. And um, in this verse, it's translated as when. It can also mean if, or for, or um, sometimes even because. Okay, ki when. And this is a a tav with a chirik which says e, so this is t. And this is a sin 
and then a kamatz, which says ah, and this aleph, this silent, and it goes with it. So this is tisa, tisa. This this double, um, these double lines here is um, a trope mark, um, and it's gershaim. So we know that the accent mark is on the last syllable, sa, tisa. <coughs> and that literally means um, to take up or to lift up. Um, okay. And so this is um, this is an aleph with a sugo, which is n. This is a tab, which says a t sounds. This is et. This is a direct object pointer. No, um, no translational equivalent in in English for this for this word. Trans, no translatable equivalent, <laughs> at least not in this context. Sometimes it means with, but not here. Okay, so this is a resh. And this holem above the, the aleph make, makes a o sound. So this is ro. And this is a shin, so we'll close out that syllable as rosh. Rosh. And rosh means head. Okay? Head. And this is a bet <clears throat> with a shiva. So we're, we're going to sound the shiva. Usually is sounded in the beginning of a word. This is be. And this is a nun that's said in the yud together. We'll say ne. Bene. This means children of. Ben is son, Benim is sons, Bene is sons of. But we can also translate it as children of, but it's literally sons of. And this is a Yud with a Chirik, which says Yi. And the Sin has a Shavanacht, a silent Shavah, so it'll be part of this syllable. So this is Yis. Yis. And this is a Reish with a Kamatz, which says Ra. And this is a tzere um, under the aleph, which is e. And this is a lamed, so it's el. Yisrael. There's, it's three syllables. Yisrael. Of course, this is Israel. And um, so, literally, so literally, literally, it's when you take up the head of the sons of Israel. But um, this means when you take a census. Okay, this is how you say that. When you take a census of the children of Israel, um, and this is a a lamed with a chirig, which says li, and this is a fe, um, and under the fe is a shavanacht, a silent shava. So this is going to be part of this syllable. So it's leaf, and then we have a kuf with a um, with a shuruk. So this says u. So this is ku. So leaf ku. Um, and then this is a dalad with sere, and the yud together will say de, de, leaf ku de, and this is a hey with a um, sogo with a memso feet, and this says hem. Um, <clears throat> so this is to number them, okay, or to count them, leaf ku de hem. Um, okay, and then this is a vav. And the accent is on the last syllable because of, we know that because of this um, sigil trope mark. And this is a vav with a shiva which says ve. This is a nun with a kamatz which says na. And this is a tav. And uh, this shiva will be sounded. It's not silent. And it's sounded because it's, it follows a, a letter with a kamatz. And when that happens, it will be sounded. So ve, na, te. And this is a nun with a vav with a dot through it. it says u, so this is nu. Venate, venate nu. Okay. And this means um, they shall give. Okay. And this is an aleph with a with a chirik, and the u together will say e. And this is a shin, so together it'll be ish. Ish means man. Isha is woman or wife. Okay. Ish isha. This is ish. It's, so it's man. So, um, and this is a, a, a cough, and this is the trope mark, so we know that the accent on the is on the first syllable. This is a cholem, so this is o, so this is ko, and this is a fe with a sego, which is e, and this is a resh, so this is fer, ko fer, and this is um, an atonement, this means an atonement. And it's this is the root also, these three letters are also the root for Kippur as in Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. Okay, 
Um, and then we have a nun with a patak, which says na, and then a fe. And this shiva is going to be silent. This is naf, and this is um, a shin. And this tevir trope indicates the accent is on the last syllable. And the vav with the dot over it says o, oh, so sho, naf sho. Now nefesh is soul. Nafsho is his soul. The this vav ending makes it his soul. So each man shall give an atonement as a ransom for his soul, or as an atonement for. Sorry, each man shall give an atonement for his soul. There we go. <laughs> That's this phrase right here. Okay. Um, each each man shall shall give as an atonement for his soul. Nafsho. Okay. And this is um, a lamed with a patak, which says la. It means to, the. And this is yod heh vav the tetragrammatron again. So this is Adonai or Hashem, the sacred name. La Adonai, to the Lord. So he shall give an, as an atonement for soul to the Lord. Okay. And then... <clears throat> This is a, a bet with a chirik, so this is B, and this is a fe. This, this shiva is again silent, so it's going to be part of this this syllable. So this is beef, beef, and this is a kuf with a cholem, and then a dalet at the end, so it says kod. Beef kod, and this, if you notice, this um, fe kuf dalet is also here, fe kuf dalet. And remember, this means um, to number them, right? So this is also uh, has to do with numbering. But the prefix is a bet right here. And so the bet uh, here indicates um, when or um, you could, it sometimes means at or with, or it can mean when in, the, in this case. So beef kud, this is when you number. And then this is an aleph with a cholem, which says o. And then this is a tav with a kamatz, which says a. So this is ta. And the mem sofit together will say tam. And this is, this etnachta is the accent or trope mark. So we know the accent is on the last syllable. So it's otam. Otam means them. So when you number them, otam. Okay. And it's actually, um, it's actually the et right here. Um, with the suffix am, which means them. So, bifkud otam. Bifkud otam. When you number them. Okay. And then this is a vav with a shavah, which says v. And this is a lamid. And then cholem, this dot right here uh, above the aleph says o. Oh, so, this is a velo. And this is a yud with a hirik, which says yi. This hay is going to be silent. So, yi. And this is a, a yud with a sigol and the he. The sigol says eh, so this is ye, ye, ye. And this means there will be, or he, he will be, or it will be. The lo means and not, it negates this right here. So this together, the lo ye, ye means there will not be, okay? And there will not be. And this is a vet with a kamatz, so we say va. And this is a he with a sigol, so we say he. And then the m, I mean the mem sofit, closes the syllable out, so it'll be hem. Um, so this this vet is kind of like this bet right here. It can mean um, in or with or when. Here it means among, or you can also it can it can you can also translate it as with. And then this hem right here is similar to this am right here. It means them. So that there will not be among them or with them. And this is a nun and a sigol, which says ne. And this is a, a gimel with a sigol. And this is a, this says ge. And this face of feet is part of the second syllable. And this, the accent mark says, is on the first syllable. So it's negef, negef. And negef um, is plague, a plague. So there, so there will not, there will not be among them a plague. And this is beef kod. This is 
the same word as this as right here. So when you number, and this is otam again here, them, when you number them. So um, when you take a census of the children of Israel, okay, kitisa et rosh b'nei Yisrael, divkudehem, to number them, venatenu, they, they, and they will give ish kofer, um, each man, an atonement, nafsho, for his soul, ladonai, to the Lord, um, bif, bifkorotam, when you number them, veloyye, and there will not be vahem among them, negev, a plague, bifkorotam, when you number them. So they must give this atonement when you number them, so that there, that, so that there will not be a plague among them. Okay, and then we have Exodus now, Exodus chapter 30, verse 13. The English says, This they shall give everyone who gets through the counting. Have a ha, half a shekel, um, according to the holy shekel, 20 geras equal one shekel. Half of such a shekel shall be an offering to the Lord. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't think we have time to do the Hebrew for this, this verse, but there's a beautiful a midrash about it. Um, it's asked, it, it's asked um, what, why did Hashem require a half a shekel per, per man instead of a whole shekel? And um, I heard a rabbi once say that it, it's because Hashem wants us to know, as, as the people of Israel, that we are not complete as individuals that we need each other so we need we need um we need another person to complete uh, the the payment given for um the atonement as an atonement for our soul so i thought that was a beautiful midrash okay we won't go over that and and now it's time for the trope we'll just do the first two verses okay and I'm going to review this um i have other videos where I go through it slowly, but right now I'm just going to go through all the trope marks, okay? Kadma munak zarka munak sego munak munak revi ma pak pashta zakev katon zakev kado mechati pcha munak nakta paze telisha ketana telisha gedola kadma vezla. אז לגרש גרשיים דרגת אוויר יתיר פסיק סוף פסוק שרשלת קרני פרה מרחק אפולה ירח בן יומו. So this is very similar, almost exactly like the um, like the tune used um, on learntrope.com, but it's even closer to the trope used on the app, which you can get on both iPhone as well as Android. The app called Pocket Torah and Pocket Torah Trope. So if you're interested in hearing the trope or, or learning to the trope, you, you should download that, that app. It's a really great app. Okay. So the first verse. Um, sorry, okay, let me read the English first again. Just the first two, two verses. Though. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, When you take the sum of the children of Israel according to their numbers, let each one give to the Lord an atonement for his soul when they are counted. Then there will be no plague among them when they are counted. Okay, so this, remember this is Vaidaber, so, um, and he spoke, right? And this is a Mercha, so this is Vaidaber, and this is um, Adonai, so this is Tipcha, so this is Adonai, so together this is Vaidaber Adonai, and remember this is El Moshe, so this is a mercha again. So mercha is mercha, just like this. So this is a Moshe, and this is 
um, Lemor, and the soft pasuk says, soft pasuk. So this is Lemor, and this is saying. Okay, so I'll chop the whole thing now. This whole verse. By the bed, Adonai, Moshe Lemor. Next verse. I'm going to trope all the trope marks, okay? Um, so this is Munach Gershaim Mercha. Sorry, this is a rare one. Um, this is Zarka Sego. Okay, so let me do that. Let me do that more fluidly. So this is Mercha. Zarka Sego and this is Kadma Vyazla Munach Darga Tevir Tibha Munach Hednachta Mercha Tevir Tibha Mercha Sof Pasu. Okay, now with the Hebrew, this is Ki and this is M. Munak, so this is ki, and this is gershaim, and this is tisa, so this is tisa, so this is ki, tisa, <coughs> and this is mercha, and et rosh is et rosh, <coughs> and this is um, <coughs> zarka, so b'nei Yisrael is B'nei Yisrael. And this is Sego. So this is Lif Kudehem. This is Kadma Vyazla. So Venatanu is Venatanu. There's two trope marks there. And this is Munah. So this is Ish. And this is Darga. So this is Kofel. And this is Tevir. So Nafsho is Nafsho. And this is Tipcha. So this is Ladonai. And this is Munach. So this is Bifkod. And this is Etnachta. So this is Otam. And this is Mercha. So this is Veloye is yeah, and this is Hello. Hello. Maybe I'm not on mute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> is this Amanda? Yes. Hey. <laughs> okay. You were. I think you were on mute. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna mute it. I'm listening. It. Okay. So this is um Tavir. So it's. So this is Vahem, and this is a Tibcha, so this is Negev, so Negev is Negev, and this is Mercha, so Bifkod is Bifkod, and this is Sof Pasuk, so this is Otam, Otam is Otam. Okay, let me just do the whole thing now. This is Ki Tisa Et Rosh Bene Yisrael Lif Kudehem Venate No Nu Ish Kofer Nafsho Ladonai Bif Kudotam Velo Yeva. Oh, sorry. Velo yev vahem negev bif korotam. Okay. And since we have someone here now, would you like to unmute, unmute yourself and practice? I mean, you don't have to do the trope, you could just read it. Hey, um, I'm sorry. I have the kids here, so just. Uh second it's okay let me see bye mm -hmm. <clears throat> bye good okay bye da bye da bear mm -hmm. good that's and oh, do you remember what that what that what that means 
uh, to speak. Or yes, um, more specifically, and he spoke. And he spoke. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hashem. Mm -hmm. El. Mm -hmm. Me Moshe. Mm -hmm. And do you know what that El Moshe means? Um, well, I mean Moshe, but El, I don't remember at the moment. Two, two, Mo two Moses. Two Moses. El means two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, le, le mor. Right. And do you remember what that means? No, I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it, it means to say or saying. It's usually translated as saying. Okay. To right. say. How about this one right here? All right. Key. Mm hmm and that's that's when okay, why don't so you say the definition if you know it. if you don't know it then i'll say it yeah see i'm right now learning like I, what i know is like how to say it but i don't know too many definitions at the moment mm -hmm. that'll come when you just keep reading it and you know um and and hearing what it means just repetition okay um and you said key means what it, well, here it means when. It sometimes also means um, for or because or, or oh. that. So here it means when. Okay. Ki, um, tisa, tisa? Tisa, tisa. Tisa. Uh huh. That means um, when you when you take up. Or sorry, when this means you take up, you will take up. Okay. And. El, no, et. Mm -hmm. um, rosh. Good. And um, uh, guess what it means? Because it's like, it's the same word as in Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. So what do you think that means? Uh, to, I don't know, to the head? Right, it means head. Et is just a direct object pointer. You, we don't translate this in, in English usually. Okay. So yes, okay. Russia's head, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Bene. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Yeah. This is, this is kind of easy. Can you get this, guess this one? Sons of, yeah, sons of Israel. Uh, Israel. Israel, mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Leap. It's a fe. Yeah. Okay. Leaf. Mm -hmm. uh, leaf key. No, K. Um, this. K this do, no. K D. No. That's an E sound, right? With the three of them like that? This is U. U. That's an U sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Kude, that? Yep, leaf kude. Mm -hmm. Leaf kude hen. Leaf mm -hmm. kude hen. Yes, long word. Okay. Yeah. This means um, to number them. Usually the, the lamed in front of a verb, it indicates that it's the infinitive, which means two. Right. Uh, even even before a, a noun, actually, like this one, Ladonai means two, Hashem. So this is two something. This part is to number, and the hem suffix means them. So to number them. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the na the nat. The na, uh -huh. We're gonna we're gonna put nat no. Benatenu, right? We're going to pronounce Benat it. Okay. So that's silent sounded shva. Not, this is not a silent shava. It, it, sometimes it is. The, the reason why it's not a silent shava is because it follows a letter that has a kamats. And so the shava after the kamats is always sounded. Sorry, okay. the shava after the kamats is always sounded. So, so it's venatenu. Mm -hmm. And. And of course the Vav means and and then you know you know the the name Natan Nathan? Mm -hmm. do, do you know what that means? I actually don't. Okay, it means he gave. So Nathaniel. 
it means Hashem gave, right? Nathaniel, okay. Nathaniel. So um, this is, and they, so this U ending means they. So, and they shall give, okay? Or they okay. gave. They gave. Okay, and then this one right here. Ish. Mm hmm Man. Yes, right. right. Mm hmm Okay, so. Kofer. Kofer, right. Kofer. okay. Uh -huh. And um, accent is on the first syllable, Kofer. And this is related to Kippur. So guess what this means? You said to pour? Kippur, as in Yom Kippur. Oh. Atonement? Mm -hmm, mm hmm as in atonement. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, naf, nafsho? Nafsho, good. You know what nafesh means, nafesh? So? Soul, right. And this Vav ending at the end means his. So not okay. for his soul. So each man each man as an atonement for his soul. Okay. Oh, enough okay. show. Okay, and then La La Sorry, this is Yudhe Vav Hey. Oh. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> Le Le Adonai. <laughs> La donai, right, to the Lord, or, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right, we're moving along here. So, um, beef, mm -hmm. beef coat. Right. So, um, this is related to this word right here. Um, no. Number, yeah, in, in uh, numbering, like the verb mm -hmm. to number, right? So, the difference here is, of course, you don't have this, a hem ending and you have a bet and this bet here will mean when yeah we'll translate it as when sometimes also means at or with but here it's when so when um when you number beef code um when you number okay um otan mm-hmm and this is like the et up here, but it also has this am um ending. And very often the am um ending or even m em ending means them. So them. I just mean. learned that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And velo. Mm -hmm. Do you not know what that means? Lo. Do you know what lo means? Um, no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or or him right but i'm not sure like in what context is what is used what <laughs> oh that that low um low is with a vav the vav at the end oh okay, okay. Um, just like okay. just let, remember when i said um here naf show is his soul okay it's that vav ending at the end okay. that makes it um him or okay. his and then the Lamed, if you say lo, that would be to him. Okay. Remember I said the Lamed often means to? Yeah. This is just no. Velo. Yeah. Velo. Mm -hmm. Okay. And no? What does that mean? And no? Well, it's actually negating this verb right here. Okay. So read this first. We'll translate it and then... It'll make more sense. Okay. Velo Hashem. Oh, no. This is not the, the name, but it... Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. But it is... Oh, like, oh it tricked me. <laughs> Velo... Okay, so I see here. Uh, the... Yeah. Yeah, yay. Oh, so this is a hirik, and it says E. I'm not sure. Both is eh, eh. E -e? I'm not really not sure how to pronounce oh. it actually. Ye -e. Ye -e. Ye -e? Mm -hmm. Okay. This means he will be or it will be. Okay, or there will be. And this is actually what the first part of Hashem's name is from. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so that's why I got tricked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> There will not be. Instead of there will be, there will not be. Okay. There will not be. Okay. Um, Bahem. Bahem, good. And so. Um, in, like in them. Very close. This sometimes means in. Here it means among. And it's, okay. it also mean that. it's just because I know the verse. Yeah. This is among them. Okay. But yeah, so, but that's that that would be a good translation maybe for a different context. Yeah. Okay. Will not be among them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ne negef. Good. And this tipha right here tells you that the accent is on the first syllable. So it's negef. Negef. And it it's uh it means um plague. It's translated as plague, a plague. Okay. And then let's see, be beef cold. Mm -hmm. You remember what that means? It's the same as this right here. Numbers. When you number, very good. When you number or in your numbering, you can say that too. Okay, so the bet, like in, among, or when. when. Yeah, when. very versatile. Okay. And then, Otam. Mm -hmm. You know that one too. Uh, them, but what is right. the O again? The the all of the have is o, yeah. it. Right here. It's a direct object pointer. What does it stand for, though? It doesn't usually stand for anything. Sometimes oh. it means with, but like um, if 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 in English when we say like um give me give me the apple we don't we don't have any direct object pointer between give and the apple but in hebrew you have to have something between that verb and that noun that the verb refers to and that's what et does so this is a conjugation of both the et and then the am ending which means them Mm -hmm. So this et tells you that it that this 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 noun am um, them belongs to this uh, verb beef code um, when you number when you count them. Oh, pointing to it, yeah, them. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, I'd like to invite you to visit my web website at www.hebrewmime.com. That's h e b r e w m-a-y-i-m dot com and you can click on the button to sign up for free lessons free hebrew lessons to your email delivered every week or so sometimes i miss a week sometimes i'll send more than one email for that week so again just visit my website hebrewmime.com and um, i also have special sections here um, not only can you sign up for free Hebrew lessons to your email, but you can also get my playlist to learn the Aleph Bet, even Aleph Bet with Elmo. And we also, ha I also have a section on um, learning various Jewish prayers and blessings. Um, I also have, um, you can get, see all of the Hebrew lessons from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And what else? Oh, I have a section on ancient Hebrew, learn how to pronounce um, the Hebrew letters in the ancient Hebrew pronunciation, the ancient Hebrew tongue. I have some lessons on how to trope or chant the Torah, specifically lessons for that. And, um, and then I also um, have links to, links to, if you're interested in getting more formal biblical Hebrew lessons or modern Hebrew lessons from um, a good friend in, in Israel. So you can check that out as well. So just visit my website at hebrewmime.com. Shalom. Shalom, my name is Maim, and I'm a naturopathic herbalist and holistic life coach. And I'm the founder of the Aruka Holistic Life Academy. Our students learn how to become effective healers using nutrition, herbs, and other holistic healing methods. I have found that to become a holistic healer, 
you, number one, don't need to be licensed. Although some of our students are medical professionals, doctors, nurses, et cetera, but you don't need a medical degree or a license to become a holistic healer. Number two, you don't need to study for four or more years in college. And number three, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars for a medical for a medical degree or a nutrition degree or any other kind of expensive degree. I don't have any of these things, yet I have built a profitable online health coaching business. And I'll tell you the eight things, though, that I have found that you do need. Without these eight things, healers are ineffective and lack confidence in being a holistic healer. And most holistic schools and certification programs don't incorporate all eight of these secrets, which is why many graduate from them, from nutrition schools or health coaching schools or herbalist schools, etc., feeling inadequate as a healer. So I would like to share you, share with you my secrets on how I became an effective holistic healer and built a profitable online health coaching business. You can become the healer of your home and your community without the need for pharmaceutical drugs with dangerous side effects, hospitals, doctors, or even dentists. You can build a profitable online health coaching business without the need for years of college for an expensive degree. My mission is to show you how. Visit my website at www.aruka.com slash free to get my eight secrets on how to become an effective holistic healer.